Today we'll be in Luke chapter 12, beginning in verse 35 in this text. Jesus walks away from being anxious to giving them what they should be concerned most about. Getting them ready for his second coming, for his return, for him returning to the earth to divide the right, the left, the sheep, and the goats. Um, and what he wants them to live like and what they should look like when he returns. When I was a kid, and she's probably going to watch this video, so I might get in trouble for this. When I was a kid, my mom, see, you got to keep in mind, this is before text messaging, okay? Those of you who are, you know, 22 years and younger, this is before text messaging. There was no, your mom texts you and tell you, I want you to do this, 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 this. No, your mom would leave when you're a teenager, and she write on a note everything she wanted you to get done that day. Okay, then when you woke up, 7, 8 o'clock, you know, after she was already at work, you would go out to the, to the kitchen to get some breakfast. And for me and JP, she posted on the fridge because she knew that's where we would eventually go. And, uh, and there it would be. White background, black letters. If you do not do these things, you will get in trouble when I get home. And it was a warning. <laughs> you know, and some of you husbands, you may have... You know, wives that leave you honeydew do lists. You know what honey do list is? It's where your wife gives you a list of things to do. And she says, honey, do this, honey, do this, honey, do this, honey, do this. And uh, men, what happens when you don't get it done? Kids, what happens when you don't get stuff done for your mom? Here in this text, Jesus is going to describe what the second coming is going to be like. But he doesn't really describe what the second coming is going to be like. He doesn't talk about the clouds or the trumpets or, or this and that and the other. He describes them what they should look like when he returns when he returns you know if your mom got home and you didn't have that list done you better had to, you better have had most of the stuff done and a mop or a broom in your hand finishing up as she walks in it's kind of the same morning jesus gives them in this text and we'll begin in Luke 23, excuse me, Luke 12, beginning in verse 35. I don't know why I said Luke 23, but Luke 12, beginning in verse 35, Jesus said, Be dressed in readiness and keep your lamps alight. Be ready to go. He said, Look, when I return, when I come back, you don't need to be in your pajamas. Don't look like you just got out of bed. Don't look like you're brushing the sleepies out of your eyes. Don't look like you're trying to search for things. Be ready. Have the lamp lit. Have oil in it. Don't have on your pajamas. Be dressed, ready to go. Verse 36, and be like men who are waiting for their master when he returns from the wedding feast, so that they may be so that they may immediately open the door to him when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master will find on the alert when he comes. Truly, I say to you that he will gird himself to serve and have them recline at the table and will come up and wait on them. He says, look, be like a servant who's waiting at the ready for their master. Be active, be ready, have your light, have your lamp lit have your clothes on be doing the work your lord has given you and be ready for that day and he'll say here in a minute because you don't know when it's coming he's using a lot of terminology that they were would have seen in their life but then he tells them something they had never seen he said on that day when the servants are ready for the master the servants will get to sit they will get to recline and the master will serve them. Folks, on that day, if we're ready, Jesus will take care of us. We will get to relax. We will be get to be in heaven. And, and don't get me wrong, it's, it's, it's an analogy, okay? It's the idea that Jesus will take care of us and he will give us eternal life. We will be taken care of. Verse 38, whether he comes in the second watch or even the third and finds them so, blessed are those servants. 
And be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would have not allowed his house to be broken into. You too be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. He says, look, the, the, the servants who find who are seen by their master and who are ready and who are there and they're girded and their lights and their lamps are, are lit. They will be blessed. They will be taken care of. He says, look, if, if someone who owns a house knows that a thief is coming, what do they do? They leave the house? No, they say they sit there and they wait and they're ready for whatever the perpetrator has in store for them. Jesus says, this is what it will be like. You know, back in the day when my mom would leave us notes, we had no idea when she was coming home. Sometimes it was she had to run an errand. Sometimes she didn't have to run errands. And we had no idea when she was coming to the door. And we had to make sure the house was ready. <laughs> because if it wasn't ready, we were in trouble. We were in trouble. Jesus says in this text in verse 40, you need to be ready because you don't know when I am returning. You don't know when I'm coming. You don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know what that day will hold. Be ready. Verse 41, Peter asks a question that causes the Christ to say, change subjects just a little bit, but not, not too much. He says to him in verse 41, Peter asks, and Peter said, Lord, are you addressing this parable to us or to everyone else as well? Now, you, get, you got to understand where he's coming from, okay? This isn't, it's not a situation where they just started following Jesus. They had been following Jesus for a while. The apostles, his closest individuals, his closest disciples had been here for a while. And so Peter was like, is this for us? Or is it for everyone here that, that, that you're talking to? Like, is it specifically for the 12? Is it for everyone? Is it for both? Because there were lessons that Jesus would teach where it would be just for the 12. And there were lessons he would teach where it would be, you know, where he, where he sends out the, the 70. I believe that's in Luke uh, chapter, Luke chapter 10 where he sends the 70 out. And there were lessons where it was just for the apostles. And Peter's wanting to know, well, do I need to be listening to this or do I not need to be listening to this? And Jesus says to him in verse 42, and the Lord said, "When, who then is the faithful and sensible steward whom his master will put in charge of his servants to give them their rations at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master finds so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will put him in charge of all his possessions. Keep in mind, he uses the term here in verse 42 for this individual, the steward, the sensible steward whom his master will put in charge of the servants. Jesus is describing the apostles at this point. He's describing Peter at this point. He's describing the ones who would eventually lead the church, the early church, and who were the leaders of the disciples at this time. And he says, look, the sensible steward who's in charge of the servants, if he's found doing what is proper, he will be blessed. He says in verse 44, truly I say to you that he will put him in charge of all of his possessions. Verse 45, but if that servant says in his heart, my master will be gone a long time, in coming and begins to beat the slaves, both men and women, and to eat and to drink and to get drunk, the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him. And on an hour he does not know and will cut him in pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. He changes the parable slightly instead of it being a servant who needs to be ready for his master. It's the steward who's in charge of the servants who needs to be ready for his master. He says, look, if the leader of the servants does not do things that are appropriate for him to do, if he mistreats the servants, if he mistreats the slaves, if he beats the men, if he 
beats the women. He will be cut into pieces and thrown in with the unbelievers. You know what Jesus is pointing as to Peter? His point's be the simple. He said it's not just for them. This applies to everyone who's not me from the top to the bottom, to the highest servant, to the lowest servant, to the steward who's in charge of other servants, to the very bottom. You need to be ready and doing what you're supposed to do. It's unclear how much Peter understood at this moment what his job was going to be after the resurrection of Jesus. Based on what he says later on in the Gospels, it seems like he didn't have a full grasp later on, so he couldn't have had a full grasp here about what his job was. He knew at this point he was going to be some type of leader. And, you know, that, that's obvious from when Jesus tells him, you will be fishers of men. That he will be some type of leader. That the apostles were to be some types of leaders for the church. Jesus tells him the same parable, just some characters switch around specifically for Peter, specifically for the apostles saying, look, yeah, you will be in charge. Yes, you will be a leader. Yes, you will be one of the stewards who are looking after the servants, who are looking after the slave. But make sure you're doing the right thing too. Or your punishment will be harsh. He says in verse 47, that slave who knew his master's will and did not get ready or act in accord with his will shall receive many lashes. He says, look, the one who knows better, they're going to suffer. And they're going to suffer greatly. The one who did not know it and committed deeds worthy of flogging will receive but a few. And everyone who has been given much shall be required. And to whom they entrusted much of him, they of him they will ask all the more. He said, "Look, your punishment's going to be based on your doing's going to be based on what you know and what you're put in charge of." To him who knows better, he will be cut into pieces, and he will be thrown in with the unbelievers. To him who knows better, they will receive many lashings. To him who much has been given, much will be required. But to him who has been given a few, not as much will be required. To him who does not know and still finds out that he did wrong, even though he don't know, will receive but a few lashes. Jesus is saying to Peter, he's saying, Peter, you're not exempt. You're not exempt from this. Yeah, you are the leader of servants, but you're still just a servant. It doesn't matter if you're an elder. It doesn't matter if you're a deacon. It doesn't matter if you're a preacher. It doesn't matter if you're a member. It doesn't matter if you've been a member of the church for decades or if you've been a member of the church for just 10 minutes. Be ready. Be ready for that coming of Jesus. May God bless and I hope you have a wonderful day.